Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, edition of Horizon Live. Joining me in the studio today is the Foreign Minister of the Republic of Artsakh, David Babayan. Hello, Dr. Babayan, and welcome. It is your first visit to Los Angeles since uh, September 27th when the war erupted. Uh, welcome, and uh, we know that uh, you have left behind a lot to be here with us so we can know firsthand what's going on. Let's first of all talk about what is happening today as we speak on the borders of Armenia and Artsakh. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting here because it's a great honor and privilege to be here in the studio uh, in the Horizon TV channel, which is one of the most well-known Armenian uh, you know, TV channels worldwide, by the way. So, yes, we have uh, entered a very kind of historical period of our history. We face existential threats and uh, a new genocide. This is why we have to be united. We have to do everything possible, both on geopolitical front and also in our domestic politics to uh, be reunited, to maximize all our resources, and not to allow any bad tendency to happen. We still have possibilities to do that. Uh, what are those possibilities? It's very difficult for us sitting tens of thousands of miles away to really understand those possibilities. You know, no, it's, it's, not, it's difficult, but it's possible. Because indifference, this is the most important problem we have. Uh, so for diaspora, uh, Artsakh should become, at least for some period of time, number one issue. We call our compatriots to make Artsakh-centric policy the basis of pan-Armenian political agenda. Because if there is no Artsakh, there will be no Armenia. You see what's happening. Artsakh, uh, for many decades, it was a shield for Armenia. Yes, it's heavy, but it's not a burden. Now we see that when this shield is being, to some extent, destroyed, we know that those very dangerous vectors are trying to penetrate into Armenia proper. So what we have to do is just to always demonstrate to the world, to the American society, to American establishments, that Armenians are united and Artsakh is a problem which is number one for the entire Armenians. They have to know that because these kind of signals will also reach other states and forces, geopolitical actors. It cannot you know, uh, just be neglected by the world. And it will change the situation. Mm. This is why it's very important now. We, we still have time. And we call our American friends to understand one simple thing. The struggle of Artsakh and Armenia is not only the struggle for self-determination and security, decent future of our people. It is also the struggle against tyranny against uh, dictatorial regimes which want to destroy democratic states. Mm -hmm. Dictatorial Azerbaijan and Turkey, which also uh, have established a close alliance with terrorists. This is already the, a threat to the entire civilized world. This is why it's very important. If great powers don't pay attention to little countries, they will face great problems mm -hmm. later on. Incidentally, uh, Foreign Minister Babayan is here in Los Angeles at the invitation of the Armenian National Committee of America Western Region. He will be speaking on Saturday at its grassroots conference and will be attending uh, its annual event on Sunday evening where he will also be uh, honored. He's going to also have meetings with community uh, leaders later on in the week as well as some non-Armenian and uh, political officials. You're just coming from Washington. Some of the issues that you just brought up, hopefully you had an opportunity to discuss with some legislatures and other people in office. How did they respond? 
Well, I think that with uh, deep concern and interest, because people who really understand all those things cannot be indifferent. Well, we understand that there are some political considerations, calculations, which is normal. But on the other hand, values are also very important. If we replace values with price, it will bring to a catastrophe. There is only one, let's say, peculiarity here, time. It may come in one year, 10 years, or whatever, but it will come, definitely. So this is our message. Don't be indifferent. Don't neglect values, because if you neglect values, you will have problems. You know, the situation is very much similar to what happened in 1930s with Germany. Because at that time, the West and the Soviets tried to use Nazis against each other. They supported them in different ways. But what was the result? Everybody lost. Mm -hmm. So Turkey now behaves exactly like Nazi Germany in 1930s. By the way, Erdogan is a politician who openly prizes Hitler. And we don't see any response. During, you know that uh, episode, probably very nasty thing, when President Erdogan and President Aliyev, together with their wives, visited Artsakh, mm -hmm. occupied territories mm -hmm. of Artsakh. And openly, the wife of Erdogan advises to Azerbaijani, their Azerbaijani brothers, that, and sister, in, in terms of Mehriban Ali, was the first lady and the first vice president of Azerbaijan, that you have to speculate with the issue of prisoners of war and try to, you know, connect it with the maps of minefields. Can you imagine the cynicism? and hatred, the, the level of hatred. This is a gross violation of international law, international humanitarian law, and we see indifference. Mm -hmm. If today these kind of things happen in Artsa and with Armenian people, tomorrow it will be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the individuals that you came in contact with in Washington was Representative Frank Pallone, who just was last weekend on the delegation with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. What was his uh, impression of what's going on in Armenia and Artsakh? Well, Plum is uh, really a man of values. Uh, and he understands our concerns. We had a very um, fruitful conversation with Congressman Plum. And uh, I think that he comprehends the situation. It's, it's interesting that since last week's attack on uh, Armenia proper, uh, there seems to be a change in the U.S. Uh, attitude uh, toward uh, uh, this issue. Uh, yet we have been talking about this for 30 years with our political officials. What do you think this change is? Well, we have to wait and see because uh, it, the wording and the fact that many U.S. officials, especially in the Congress uh, and Senate, understand the threat and they are condemning Azerbaijan, it's, it's a very positive thing. And we saw in recent, uh, you know, developments in the Congress uh, and speeches of, the, of uh, several congressmen, how the, they perceive the situation and they called the U.S. to impose sanctions on Azerbaijan. Now we have to uh, make words deeds and then see, because if we, we still have possibility to somehow contain Azerbaijan and Turkey politically, after some period of time, it will be already impossible. Yeah. And I guess it is up to us here in the United States to speak to our elected officials and uh, kind of press them to, as you said, make those words into actual deeds because it is a human issue. It's not a, you know, it's not Armenia, Artsakh. For us, it is Armenia and Artsakh, but from a larger 
perspective. It's a, a human rights issue, it's a justice issue, and also uh, an issue of uh, democracy. I want to go and talk about kind of the daily uh, realities in Artsakh. Uh, for example, one of the many questions that I, I get as the editor of Asparis from our readers or uh, wherever I go is the role of the Russian peacekeepers. What is their role? Uh, and, you know, we saw last month everything that happened in Berzor. We saw in March with Paruch and everything else. What is going on there? Look, the... We, we are at the beginning, let us clarify one very important issue. Uh, we have to indeed comprehend the reality with all its problems. And we have to be wise enough because geopolitics is a very tough thing. Naiveness or stupidity will be punished immediately. So Armenian people, has a unique opportunity. I think that there is only one nation, two nations actually in the world, who can have uh, this luxury to maintain good relations with many countries who have problems with each other. These are the Armenians and Jews. Why? Because we have diaspora. This gives us a, a very interesting possibility, leverage, you know, to to uh, somehow avoid uh, difficulties and maintain good relations with those countries uh, which are very important geopolitically and where we have Armenian diaspora. We must have good relations, fraternal relations with those countries. This is why uh, when people say that they are pro-Western, for example, the only criteria should not be hatred towards Russia. We don't have such a luxury, again, to hate somebody. And if somebody considers Russia to be more, to be closer than the West, it doesn't mean that the only criteria should be hatred towards the West. Because in this case, we will lose everything. Definitely. Because it, a man should be stupid or anti-national to wage such kind of policy if we have a alternative to maintain good relations with everybody. Our fraternal relations with Russia are not against, directed against United States and vice versa. We have this possibility to have good relations with Russia, with the US, with Iran, with France, with many other countries. This is why we should all understand this, especially taking into consideration the severe situation which we are in. So the Russian peacekeepers, as to you know, this uh, question, play probably the most important role in maintaining relative peace and stability in the region. Without Russian peacekeeping force, believe me, there will be no Artsakh. We have to understand this correctly. Before any country in the world even start to think whether to help or not help Artsakh, there will be no Artsakh. We also understand that it's difficult for them too to maintain peace, especially when they are dealing with Turks and Azeris. Because, you see, I may say one maybe strange thing, but they didn't know with whom they were dealing. Now a lot of things have become clear that in, in terms of Azerbaijan and Turkey, they have a very, you know, unpredictable partners. Uh, cunning partners, which can at any time uh, make such a moves that will hurt the interest and security of, of the Russians themselves. This is why, for example, the Paruch uh, incident was exactly of that sort. And as to Berzor and Agavno, this is a tragedy for us. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, this is a personal tragedy for me and for each Artsakhtse and for each Armenian, for you, for any patriotic people. But this issue was part of that notorious 2020 agreement, unfortunately. Now what we have to do is just be very wise, wise enough, because 
geopolitical battles and their results are first of all planned and elaborated in minds and hearts and later on, you know, on the battlefield. So what we have to do is always to keep this balance. It will be a total tragedy if we try to, I don't know, choose between the great powers. If we try to somehow, you know, play any game, it, if we have the possibility to have good relations with all of them, we must do that because indeed we are facing existential threats and this is the most difficult and dangerous period in our entire history. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you continuously say and so do uh, other Arsakh um, officials is that uh, any status under Azerbaijan is unacceptable. Uh, and our, uh, Artsakh's independence and self-determination must be respected. And then, of course, there's that whole issue of the OSC Minsk Group co-chairs, where our enemy is essentially saying that they don't exist. Uh, and we're also he hearing murmurs from different capitals in the world that that process is faltering. Uh, how do you envision this happening? Uh, right now, uh, given some of the uh, issues that emanate from that, as you said, notorious uh, agreement in 2020. Look, when we are talking about relations with Azerbaijan, we are not against negotiations, you know, some settlement of problems, but this cannot be at the expense of Artsakh's future. Because within Azerbaijan, we Indeed, we don't have any future. Other, well, rather we have one future. Total extermination, genocide, deportation, etc. Why? Not because of the people. There are no bad or good people. There are bad or, or, or good states. Azerbaijan is a state where uh, Armenophobia is a state, so to say, ideology or religion. It is one of the manifestations of Nazism. So within Azerbaijan, again, there will be no Artsakh. Uh, sometimes we can hear that people say that, well, maybe it, is, it will be willing Azerbaijan to provide some security and, and rights to the people of Artsakh. And we always make this uh, comparison. Well, these poor people who were uh, enslaved by the Nazis in concentration camps, they also had freedom and liberty. They were free to sleep every day for 10 minutes, for example. They were totally free to see what kind of dreams they, they saw. But is it enough to say about safety, security? Of course not. So we have to understand this. As to OEC Minsk Group, and especially Minsk Group co-chairmanship, now we see that the, their work has been frozen because of the Russia-West problems. But only Azerbaijan says that there is no, this, this organization and has expired its work and it's not in need. Russians say that, well, it is frozen maybe one day. For us, it's very important to have this means group format because, first of all, it's the only working and uh, more or less, uh, you know, um, objective format of negotiations platform. Second, Artsakh status as a uh, party to the conflict and negotiation party, these kind of things have been recognized by the OEC format. So why Azerbaijan wants to abandon this, refute this format because of this very reason. Because if there is OEC means group format and co-chairmanship, it means that there is Artsakh and the issue hasn't been solved. This is why it wants just to destroy everything which is related and which recognizes Artsakh as a distinct entity. Uh, how are the people in Artsakh coping with, uh, you know, uh, 
this whole situation. I was talking to someone the other day, and I said, for the last two day, two years, I have been reporting bad news on a daily basis. Well, my reporting it is one thing. The real heroes of the scenario are the people of Hartsakh who are actually living it and uh, enduring it. Uh, how is the population coping with this whole situation? Well, first of all, we have to know and uh, never forget that we are forging our future, that our future is in our hands. Even if the entire world says you have to be part of Azerbaijan and you refute that, nobody can press you because princi principle stance is at the heart of national pride and also geopolitics. Look how Azerbaijan behaves. It even, you know, can make aggressive statements and wage aggressive policy against Russia, United States, I don't know, Europe, UN. Why? Because, well, they have this principle stance. Evil in its nature, but principle stance. So we have to be also to follow this principle stance. We have to understand that there is possibility to save the country and that Armenian people possesses enormous level of uh, resilience. Because in our place, put many other nations in our place, they will not even, I don't know, live there for one, two days. They will immigrate immediately. But we are there. And we celebrate birthdays. Our maternity hospital <laughs> is actively you know, operating. So babies were born and life is continuing. This means that we have this potential. Of course, we are in a very difficult situation, but we consider this to be a mission, a mission toward the generations to come, a mission which we have to carry out, respecting the memory of millions of Armenian victims of different genocides, starting from uh, 1915 before and ending with this recent, you know, aggressive acts of Azerbaijan and Turkey. So it's a mission. It's a mission, it's a dedication, and it helps us to overcome and face those difficulties because we have kind of a symmetry of motivations. Mm -hmm. For us, it's a matter of survival. It's a matter of, of uh, I don't know, values. For Azerbaijan, it's a matter of ambitions and aggression. Um, you talked about the role that the diaspora has to play uh, from where I'm sitting and again having covered this uh, for 30 years and more specifically uh, the past two years, I feel as a diasporan that perhaps our approach uh, should uh, kind of change a little bit, taking lessons uh, from the past. What do you think the diaspora should be doing right now? Well, I think that the diaspora is also struggling for its future. It's also a front line of keeping your national identity alive, of maintaining ties with historical, of historical homeland, of being worthy citizens of your host country. This is, again, a great challenge. But now we have to, again, think about our homeland not be indifferent, because if there is no Artsakh, there will be no Armenia. Without Armenian diaspora, will survive only for one, two generations, and it will just evaporate. How can we let a God-chosen people to have such an end? I mean, it's, it's not something which we want. And believe me, God is almighty, and he is generous. He will not give us a destiny we maybe do deserve. He will give some chance, and we have to use that chance. And the, uh, because for a lot of people, that concept of that we always talked about, and I, in fact, wrote in our editorial for September 2nd, that uh, you know the right to self-determination, the democratic choice to uh, 
you know, become independent and then the referendum and all of that. Uh, in the larger context of things, for some it uh, gets lost. How can we bring that issue and reinforce it in every Armenian? Because the point that I made was exactly what you said, that without Artsakh, and its independence, our entire nation is at uh, risk of uh, surviving. You touched upon a very important issue with a very sophisticated manner. First of all, we have to reinforce and revive, you are right, this idea among Armenians. You know, Artsakh, again, it was a heavy thing. It was a heavy shield, but it, it isn't a burden. Look what happened. This is why each Armenian should understand that there is no difference between Artsakh, Yerevan, or whatever. And if we somehow guarantee the same level of comprehension within Armenian world, then it will be much easier to work in different international fora. What we have to do is just to increase the perception of Artsakh, strengthen it. This is why I ask our compatriots, our brothers and sisters in the diaspora and worldwide to have this Artsakh-centric approach, to consider Artsakh issue number one. Not forgetting about our other our pan-Armenian issues, recognition of genocide, other things. But at least in, in the short-term and mid-term perspectives, Artsakho-centric approach should be at the heart, at the basis of our uh, political agenda, national political agenda. Uh, plus, we also have to, as a nation, realize that what's happening today on the borders of Armenia and Azerbaijan is an actual continuation of uh, what started I would say on September 27th, but before that. Uh, and I think uh, our viewers should understand that this is a national reality that we're all uh, living with. Last month it was Berzor. This month it is Sunik, Gerar Kunik, and Vayotzor, and it could be something else. We all have to recognize this is that this is one struggle Correct. Uh, for survival. Uh, before we close, do you have any final thoughts? Well, I would like just to wish everybody good health, robust health, wisdom, and unshakable face. This is not the end of our history. This is kind of a new page, a revival, and we have to be ready for that. And speaking to you, we also uh, are fortunate to have you here uh, personally because we do, uh, as uh, we Armenians say, Pet Kunek Gotep and Velu, and you bring that uh, to us and uh, do understand that our community is 100%, 1000% uh, with you and every single person. Uh, in Artsakh. Thank you, Thank David you. Babayan. It was good to Thank see you, you again much. and it was Thank good you. to chat with you. Uh, Dr. Babayan will be a featured speaker at ANCAWR's Grassroots Conference tomorrow, Saturday, at the Universal Hilton Hotel. Uh, if you are not registered and would like to hear more from him and other experts on human rights as well as legal issues that are uh, that we are conf confronting as a nation in the international community, please attend. The event starts at 10 a.m. Thank you again thank you and good luck. good luck. And thank you for watching. See you again next time.